Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Kibana. Kibana is the visualization tool for Elasticsearch. In my last video, I discussed about Elasticsearch where I installed Elasticsearch in a Docker container and then using C Sharp code, I accessed the Elasticsearch, added some data, did search and then discussed about the index in Elasticsearch. In today's video, I'm going to install Kibana and then using the Kibana user interface, I'm going to show how we can add, update or select data. And then I'm going to show some visualization tools that are available in Kibana for creating some graphs and charts. So to install Kibana, first I'm going to use a Docker command. And just like last time, it's going to be a Docker pull. And this time it's going to be the Kibana version 7.11.2 and once the image is installed. I already have the image installed, so it is just saying it's already up to date. Next thing we are going to do is we are going to run the Kibana. But for that, what we need is we need the container for the Elasticsearch so that the Kibana can connect to the Elasticsearch container. For that, I would need the container ID for the Elasticsearch. So I'm going to run Docker PS and it's going to give me the container ID. Next, what we can do is I can do Docker run and dash dash link to link the container of the elastic search with Kibana. So I'm going to say this is this is elastic search and then the port for Kibana I'm going to have 5601. That's the default port. So I'm going to keep the same one. And then after that, I'm going to give the image for the Kibana. Now I'm going to run this. I have to give a space here that was missing. Now let's run the command. This should start the Kibana container and we can see here it says server is running and at port 5601, the port that we have passed. So if we go to the browser and say localhost 5601, it's going to load the Elastic UI for Kibana and we can see it is showing up the Kibana UI. Now as you can see, the Kibana comes with a bunch of options and if I expand the left navigation, there are a lot of things available here starting with analytics, enterprise search, observability for logs and some security options and the dev tool. What we are going to focus today is going to be mostly around dev tools and around discover. These are the two things which mostly we'll be using in our day-to-day -day life when it comes to using Kibana. Now if I start with a discover option, if I go to discover, we can see that the users index is what we can see here. This is the index that we created in our last video in Elasticsearch and that is what it is shown here. And then in the fields, we can select what we want to see. So it can be just address and then age, city and name. And we can move things around. We can move the name to the first one and then age and then address and city. And as you can see, it's pretty, it's a very powerful UI for showing the data that we already ingested into the system. And these are different users that we have. Now, before going to other features of analytics, let's play around a little bit with the dev tools. If we start the dev tool by default, it starts with the search command where it matches everything. And if we click here, it is going to execute the search and it's going to show you everything that it has inside the elastic search. And we can see there are a lot of options in here. Now let's start with some meaningful query. So now if we want to search for our index, what we can do is we can do get users search and if we do that and for the parameters we are not going to pass anything if we execute that command we're going to get all the users that are there so you can see it took four milliseconds and you can see that it is giving all the users that there are so it starts with user two three four five and then new name new one user with id and then user so there are all the users are been shown here this is just getting all the users now let's say we want to add a new user so for adding we're going to use post and then slash users and we are going to add it to the document for the users and then we can give name and for the name we can say user 10 we don't have an user 10 and then 
for age we can give 25 and then for address we can give 567 address and then we can add the city and for city we can give Quince, let's say and then as you can see the execute command is for every request we type it's very intelligent and this is extremely helpful we also have an option here for copying or auto intend but let's execute this command if we execute this command you can see it comes back with a response it's successful and it created a result now if we go back and execute the search again we should see user 10 showing up and we can see user 10 showing up here so this is how you can add a new item to an existing index now let's do one thing let's go ahead and create a new user but if you remember i discussed in the last video that the id which is auto generated it's not very helpful especially it's not, it's very hard to remember but if we want to create a user with an id we can do that with another post command so what we can do is again we can say post and users doc and for id let's say we want to give 11 and we will create a new user let me copy paste this object from here and let's give NYCS address and this is and then 9 this is maybe 35 and user 11 let's execute this now if we execute the ID as you can see now it's not auto generated anymore it is the number 11 which we passed as a part of this request which is getting created here if we do the user search now we'll see the new user created here so here as you can see the new user we created is not showing up it's because by default the number of user returned is only 10 so what we can do is we can specify the size and if we do size is 11 and execute now if we go down we can see our user id which is 11 and user 11 is now showing up in the search result now next thing we want to do is now that we created a user with id we can also get the user with id so we can use get users slash doc slash 11 and if we just execute this we can see the new user that we created is now showing up in the result the other thing we can do is we can update an existing user and for that we can use post so we can again use post slash users slash underscore update is the method and let's say we want to update the user 11 and then for the update we have to specify the doc and inside the doc we are going to specify the parameter that we want to update so let's say we want to update the age age from 35 to 30 30 so now let's execute this i missed a colon here okay now let's execute this and we can see it is updated and now if we go back and execute the get again we can see the age is changed to 30. so this is how you can update an existing document in an index and then finally the other command that you can use which is also very handy let's say you want to add a new property or attribute to the existing index how would you do that so for that also you can do post users update and let's say we want to update this 11th user and let's say we want to add a new attribute to it and similarly we'll use doc and let's say the new attribute is has pet it's a boolean which we are going to say as true and now if we execute this you can see it is successful and now let's get this user again and we can see this user now has has pet property which is set to true so these are some of the command which are very common that we are going to use in a day-to-day -day usage of Elasticsearch and you can see how easy it is to do this using Kibana now let's go back to our analytics portion let's go back to discover and if we go back to discover now we can see our newly added users are also showing up here and at this point what we can do is we can play around a little bit with some visualization aspect of Kibana but before we go that let me quickly show if we expand we can see everything in a tabular or json manner if we want as you can see this 
user interface is really really powerful and we can from here we can go and view a single document also so it's going to show the document as is come back to discover and then here also you can implement search so you can say okay where city and equals and you can give nyc and if we update now it's going to show only where city is nyc and then you can say or you can say city is nyc or age is equal to let's say 30. Now we update this. We can see wherever there is age 30 or city is nyc and now if we change this one to end we're going to see only one record where city is nyc and age and age is 30. So you can see that here you can play around with all the search criteria and if you expand this it's going to again show it in a JSON or tabular manner of the entire data and here you can select exactly what you want to see just like I showed before and you can play around with the position of the items. Now we get rid of this show everything in NYC or even get rid of this whole thing and it's going to sh by default show all the response. So that's how you can use these discover options. If you have multiple index, you can go around with different indexes and do the same thing. Now let's get back into some visualization aspect. So for that, we can go into the visualize menu. And if we go to visualize menu, we can create a new visualization and I'm going to use a lens. And then what I can do is I can say, I want to look into, let's say the age as the category and then I can up here I can go and change it to let's say a pie chart and then I can see by age what is the percentage of user and here we can save it and let's say age h pi let's say let's save this and then if we go to the dashboard here we can create a new dashboard and we can add the h pi which we created from the dashboard and then we can of course save the dashboard and then the visualization aspect that i shown we can add it from here as well so we can go we can click on edit and the edit once we click on edit yes of course we can change this or we can create a new panel and then from here again just like the visualization option we can click on lens and then this time let's create a visualization based on city we have two cities and here we can select different options we can select a line or which is not very useful for this case we can have plain and simple data table or we can have a do not and let's skip the do not and then we can save it and we can say city And now you can see the CD is also part of the dashboard. So now we have the Pi and the CD both part of the dashboard. So this is how you can end up creating a dashboard with all different sort of data analytics that you want to create. When the application loads, we can come to the dashboard and see different aspects of the result. So these are, in my opinion, are the two most used feature of Kibana. One is DevTools, using which we can run multiple queries. And then the analytics part where we can use the discover feature for discovering a bunch of indexes that we have and then finally the visualization aspect where we can create multiple visualization and then we can have them saved in the dashboard and present it to the user so that's all i wanted to cover today in terms of kibana visualization apart from these there are a few other features but as I said, I think the most used feature is the depth tools, the discover and the visualize. So that's all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching this video.